Becoming a millionaire, something that not too long ago I thought was so far out of reach. In today's video, I'm gonna be discussing the top tips to becoming a millionaire, how you can realistically expect to be a millionaire with a low budget in a small amount of time, and also some things you really need to start implementing today. I'm Marissa Romero and I'm not a millionaire. I'm actually a quarter millionaire, but I do have a plan to become a millionaire within the next 12 months. And it really freaks me out and like, you know, scares me and gets me nervous to be saying this in front of you guys. But you gotta understand where the confidence is coming from because not too long ago, I was on the traditional path like everybody else where I had a nine to five government job and I was going to work 40 years to accumulate a wealth of maybe $1.5 million, but it was going to take me 40 years to get there. It was going to take me to retire at the age of 62 and maybe have a comfortable, oh, I don't know, $2 million saved in my Roth IRA or 401k or whatever. And so to go from that to just a short three years later, producing a quarter of million dollars in my business in one year and not including the other income streams that I produce in year one and in year two, I'm just feeling like I have some really good momentum behind my back to becoming a millionaire. And I feel like it's time. Okay, and so I think step one in all of this is really to visualize. Visualize yourself having a million dollars. And let's back up a minute because if your goal is, you know, a million dollars, but you haven't made, you know, $50,000 yet or $100,000 yet, maybe your first goal is six figures. I still think everything that I say in this video is going to be valid. This is coming from the accomplishments that I've had and my plan to become a millionaire, which I'm 99.9% .9 sure will work. Okay, but I think the first step is to visualize the million dollars. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it taste like? According to Andre Jek, like he in two of his millionaire videos showed physically what a million dollars look like. And it doesn't look like much to think that you know, a lot of us are striving our whole entire lives to make this amount of money and have this type of cash. It's just like a two by three foot block of money, which is crazy. It's not that big. It's nothing like super significant, just a pile of paper that is a million dollars. That's it. And so more so than visualizing the money, what is $1 million going to bring to your life, going to do for you? How is it going to make you feel? That sensation that you get of having your net worth of a million dollars. Maybe you have an app where you're tracking your net worth and maybe you have a portfolio where altogether the investments equal a million dollars. But when you see that number hit a million dollars, what is that going to do for you? Like, can you hold that sensation and have that sensation motivate you, that feeling that you get and have that be the basis of your why and what's gonna keep you going every single day to working on your goals? Because at the end of the day, money is just a tool. It's a tool to help us achieve our dreams financially. It's a tool to help us support our families and you know buy the things that we want, have the experiences that we want. Maybe we want that money also to reinvest into a bigger purpose, to reinvest into a business that is going to help millions of people in the world figure out what all that is. You're gonna visualize this and a lot of things will come up in there, including your why, you know, maybe you wanna buy your mom a house, whatever it is that million dollars will help you do. Hold on to those feelings and sensations you get when you think about it and make sure you have it written down. Okay, and so the next thing you really have to, um, I guess not hone in on, but what, rec what? <laughs> but recognize and be aware is who you're surrounding yourself with. Um, that goes for everything, who you're following online, who you're interacting with on a day-to-day -day basis, who do you live with, who are your friends? If any of those people do not share or do not encourage the vision that you have, you have to dump them, okay? Um, there have been toxic people in my life that you know, always complain about money. They have a victim mentality like, oh, I'm always going to be poor. Like I have no skills. I don't know how to do that. Just excuses, excuses, excuses. And those people are out, out of my life because it just energetically brings me down and it's just not good for your subconscious. It's just not good for your mental health when you have a vision and a goal and you are surrounded by people that don't. Okay. So don't let their attitudes and their bad energy, you know, bring down your drive to keep going and keep persisting. And I know we're in new times now where we're in quarantine. It's a pandemic and who knows how much longer COVID-19 will last, 
but even on Zoom calls and who you're talking to, um, be aware of, of who it is. And so although we may not be interacting as much in person with the internet socially, it's just as easy to talk to people and interact. So make sure those people are good people that support you and that want the best for you. And maybe also they have the same goals. I think that's really important. One interesting thing that has recently happened on social media is there's this new app called Clubhouse. Now Clubhouse is so extremely interesting because it's like a never ending podcast. Okay. It's a social media app that we've never seen before where you have a profile right now. It's only available for iPhone users and you can only get on the app with an invite only. But the point is it's, you don't post any content. You don't upload anything. You just participate in rooms, which are like many little virtual chat rooms where you can interact and talk to people. Maybe you could be a moderator, but I bring up clubhouse because it's a really great way to interact with entrepreneurs. There's not really non entrepreneurs on there, at least yet. There's not like college students. It's just entrepreneurs. I mean, there's other there's other groups on there for sure, but a lot of the topics on there are money mindset. A lot of you'll, you can interact with millionaires like the other day, Lewis Howes and Grant Cardone, Elon Musk. They were all in a room in clubhouse, which is insane, but it's kind of like in your spare moments, you can have rooms on clubhouse playing so that you could listen in on what other people are doing and get an idea of their morning routines, their good financial practices, investment strategies, online business strategies, all these things. It's really, really cool. And so whatever you're interested, in, whether it's YouTube consulting, videography, photography, I've seen all kinds of rooms on there. I host rooms as well. I've been a moderator of different rooms, but the point is it's a great way to have a connection with people, you know, to have a safe space where you can kind of connect in and focus and uh, you know, revisualize your goals and everything like that. Okay, so the next step with becoming a millionaire is to get to know your numbers. It's impossible to become a millionaire. It's impossible to become a six figure earner if you don't know your numbers. Now, a lot of people cringe. They think, oh my God, you know, it's a daunting task. It's intimidating. It's uncomfortable. Maybe you were like I was a few years ago and you don't want to know because you knew that you weren't making any money and your numbers were in the red and you were losing money. I get it. I've been there, but you have to start knowing your numbers. And by doing that, you have to, um, you know, start bookkeeping, just general, easy bookkeeping. Maybe that looks like opening up a spreadsheet on Excel and just making notes on your main expensive things that you've spent, um, income that you do have coming in. And this is very, very important for you to make educated decisions, to know where you are so that you can have a baseline and you can go up from there because a lot of people think like, Oh my gosh, they have this fear of if I know my numbers, I'm going to be extra frustrated. If I lose money the next month and see my numbers going down. So it's almost like they have fear of what hasn't even happened yet. And so I know that's why a lot of people don't start bookkeeping is because of the initial fear of getting over. Oh man, I already know that I'm not in a good financial position and I just don't want to know. I get it. But what I recommend is start using an app like mint.com is a free website where you can connect your bank accounts. Um, it's not for business, but it is a great place to start. If you don't have that many business expenses and your income is less than $50,000, start using mint. It's a great one. That's what I used for, uh, I think a year. And then I moved to QuickBooks, but mint is really good. And although it doesn't let you have business categories, it lets you have um, custom categories. So you can create different categories. So maybe you can create a separate subscription category. If you have things monthly you're subscribed to and stuff like that, it's really handy. But the point is you have to just acknowledge where you are and be okay with it. Be at peace with it. It's fine. If you're in the red, it's fine. If you're not where you want to be at, I mean, that's totally okay. Every entrepreneur has been there. Okay. And so the next thing that I have for you guys, the last tip before I get into my exact plan, um, which I think is very, very important is to know that you'll need a lot of income streams. You'll need multiple income streams, however you want to say it, because one income stream is not sufficient. Um, they say the average millionaire has seven plus income streams. 
Um, at the moment, I have five, which I do plan to add more. I recently made a video, you can check it out after this video about my income streams. And I break down the five income streams with tips and strategies and what's yielding me 30 grand a month online plus. And so I guess the point is you have to start with one and you know, you have to start with where do you want to invest your money? So the thing is, is this Dave Ramsey, his strategy for becoming a millionaire is way different than mine. And I honestly would never try what Dave Ramsey says, where he says, you know, invest $100 a month every single month for 40 years into a Roth IRA or traditional IRA. And then from there, you invest in a stock that has a rate of return of 12%. I don't, I don't know stocks that have a rate of return of 12%. Um, I know they're much lower than that, but I was like, mm, okay, I'm going to take my risk and say that I can get to a million dollars way before 40 years from now. So my plan of investing is a little bit different. I've invested a lot of my time into figuring out online business, and that's been a very great move for me because as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I've you know created multiple income streams without having ads. Um, I've created a digital course product, which is a major passive income stream of mine. And with all of this, the whole thing is you're going to have passive income and you're going to have active income. You're going to have to keep working for quite a while, but it's okay because as long as you know you have passive income streams coming in, that's completely fine. And so whichever income stream you choose first, it'll most likely be an income stream that's active and that's perfectly okay. As long as you have a plan to make it then passive, that's what's going to allow you to build your first, your second, your third, and your fourth, and so on. And what I mean by this is let's say you really want to create digital products, you want to create um, digital ebooks or something, audiobooks, maybe you want to create a membership. This is a really good thing because it's going to be active work. However, it's very easy and you can convert it into passive income after you do the initial upfront work of you know creating the course creating the videos creating the worksheets downloadables however you create it and so that's one active income stream turned passive but then what else could you do could you maybe start an etsy store could you maybe do coaching i know that's one-on-one -on -one, but maybe you can start a coaching business and maybe it's one-on-one -on -one, and then later go to group coaching which you can scale even more because you'll be able to serve more clients with one coaching call okay so it's always a strategy to think about out. even if you start off active how could you convert it into passive and then as far as like other investments like you know real investments when people think about investments they think of the stock market dividend paying stocks they think of real estate they think of all these things now cryptocurrency and um, and having a digital wallet my advice is to pick one investment strategy and just get really really good at it okay because right now my investment strategy is i have a whole life insurance policy because i'm doing cash flow banking where basically instead of having my money in a savings account i have it in a whole life insurance policy because it accumulates compound interest over the years and it's also a way for me to take out that money that's in my loan, use it to pay for whatever I want, and then I'm paying myself back instead of if I take a loan out of the bank, then I'm paying the bank back plus interest. So instead, I flipped it to where I'm paying myself back and paying myself with interest. So that's one investment strategy I'm doing. There's other things that I'm interested in. I'll tell you, I'm not interested in real estate. I'm just, I never have been. But I am interested in creating an Etsy store and creating passive income with Etsy. I am interested in stocks. I have no idea how they work. I would love to understand like the different brokerage accounts, investing in index funds, investing in other types of stocks and having a portfolio. That is super cool to me, but we will see. Um, which direction I head in, but I know that it's going to take an up for an investment of time because I'm going to need to educate myself before I put a dollar into anything because that is the smartest move. Education, no matter what you're doing, whether you want an e-commerce business, whether you want a coaching business, whether you want to do affiliate marketing, it all starts with upfront education. And so I say education and really doing your research because for example, 
Um, in my program, Subscribers to Sales, it is a, a paid program that I have. It's the one way to get online mentorship from me and my team. But the point is the Subscribers to Sales course helps you leverage YouTube, the platform you're watching right now, to be able to create whatever you want, to create a channel that grows fast and that sells for you, okay? And so it's really a great opportunity to leverage YouTube because it's the most powerful social media platform, in my opinion, to create multiple streams of income. There's like 10 ways minimum to monetize YouTube. And that's what we go over in the course. And so that's what I mean is like a lot of people when they want to build an audience or build a personal brand, maybe they start with Instagram or Facebook or something else because they know it's a little bit easier and the learning curve is less, but the reward isn't as high as YouTube, if that makes sense. And so in that course, we have a community of people that are kind of like a tribe, like they support one another. Um, they have their wins and their milestones. Like, hey, I just got my first 5,000 views on the channel. And it's really cool because it serves a lot of great purposes all at one time. Okay, so with that being said, my plan for really scaling up or forexing my revenue is the following. That is with AdSense. The first thing I want to increase is my YouTube AdSense. Last year, I made $94,000 with Google AdSense and I want that to raise to 150 to $200,000 created just from Google AdSense alone on the YouTube channel. Um, I think it's very, very doable. At the making of this video, I have 153,000 subscribers and it's growing. And so now that I'll have the opportunity this year to scale my channel, both in views and subscribers even more. I think that that goal is realistically doable, especially with having an amazing editing team that helps me create this content and can help also just repurpose my YouTube content and post more on the channel. So that way it could increase my views and increase everything across the board. Okay, so that's Google AdSense. The second way I really plan to level up and hit that million dollar mark is with brand deals. Uh, last year, I didn't have the knowledge to fully understand what my channel and my following was worth. And I know that now I can charge quite a bit more from doing dedicated videos for companies, from doing shout outs on my channel, um, for doing collabs and sponsorships with other companies. And my goal for that is to hit the six figure mark alone just with doing brand deals. And so I've made several videos in the past about brand deals and sponsorships and tips and advice. And the point with that is you can really start to monetize brand deals and sponsorships, even if you are a small influencer, because what creators and influencers don't understand is like you're creating a paid campaign for somebody from scratch. Okay, so they have to pay you for your time to create the campaign and to produce it and to publish it and to be creative. And so anyway, not to go on a rant about brand deals and sponsorships, but I definitely think I want to hit the six figure mark on sponsorships this year, because trust me, last year, I don't even think I made $5,000 from brand deals and sponsorships. So I think there's a huge opportunity to really increase that income. So the next way I plan to uplevel my income is with course sales. So as of recently, within the past couple of weeks, we hit officially six figures in just course sales, which is really phenomenal. And we were able to do that in less than eight months. I think it was seven months from the launch of the course. And so this year I want to throw some paid advertising into the course, make the relaunch of the new version of the course even bigger and better. I want to leverage Facebook ads and YouTube ads to really get the leads into the business so that we can keep optimizing the funnel and bringing students in. And of course the main goal when the students come in is we want them to get results too. And so that's why we've revamped everything and it's going to be such a fun and exciting launch. I had mentioned it um, earlier in this video, but the course is called subscribers to sales. And the goal um, this year is minimum 500 students in the course. And so course sales is definitely going to be my main focus out of all the income streams, because that is the most, you know, leverageable as far as scalability and passive income. Okay, so the other thing that I wanna focus on scaling are my affiliate marketing commissions. Those have kind of gone down and that's just because I've stopped working with some companies as far as being an affiliate for them because honestly, uh, you know, I don't believe in the product as much. I only promote companies and brands and softwares that I use on a day-to-day -day basis and that I really believe in. And so 
Um, you know, affiliate marketing is a great source of income and I want to focus on raising that this year. My favorite affiliate product to promote are the affiliate products that bring you a recurring revenue every single month. So subscription based models where people have to pay for a monthly membership and then I get that kickback of 30 or 40 percent of a membership. And so that is definitely an income stream that I want to increase this year. And also, as I mentioned before, I'm looking to add new income streams this year. So I'm looking to add YouTube merch to my channel and start a print on demand store. Do I think that'll be the sole factor in making me a millionaire? No, but it is some extra passive income that you just set up once and it's hands off pretty much after that, because when you make the sale on your Teespring store, uh, whether it's a cup or a t-shirt or leggings, whatever, you know, the company Teespring handles all of the fulfillment, printing it and shipping it to the customers. And so that's passive. The other thing I want to do this year is figure out Etsy. I don't know if that will happen this year, but I really want to learn Etsy because I think it's a powerful platform where you can now sell digital assets or digital products, whatever you want to call it. You can sell printables, templates, uh, cookbooks, all types of stuff. And so I'm really, really interested in it. And I know it'll take a while to really make, you know, a five figure income from the Etsy store, but I'm willing to definitely try and put in the work. I know a few people that teach this and just a general tip, like if you want to learn how to do something, buy a course from somebody that is teaching how to do it. There is an Etsy course where some, where I know a girl is teaching how to create um, and make money with digital products on Etsy. I'm going to buy it so that I don't have to start completely from scratch because I know that she talks about what not to do, what to do, mistakes to avoid. And of course, I'm going to make that investment to save my time so I can just get straight to the point and set up the Etsy store the right way the first time. And so one of the last things I want to say about income streams and stuff like that is I did start a TikTok this year finally, and I think I have almost 5,000 subscribe or followers, which is crazy to me. I just started it two weeks ago, so you can't ignore ignore the virality on TikTok. And I don't expect to make that much money from TikTok from the TikTok creator fund as I do with YouTube. But that's definitely an income stream that I expect to add this year because TikTok recently opened the creator funds to TikTok creators. And I think the requirements are you need like 10,000 followers and you need to officially apply for the creator fund once your profile is eligible. So Really excited about that. But in general, you've seen how I've added one income stream and started and just kept like moving on to another. So once you have one down, you are able to figure out something else. And, and even if you have like just three or four income streams, if you just focus on growing one, that's perfectly okay. And so if you're liking this millionaire video and are wanting more ideas on making passive income, I have the perfect video for you. It's this one that I just created going from zero to $200 a day, the different methods and techniques you'll want to use. Click right here because it starts right now. See you there. Well guys, it's official and the numbers are in from last year and I officially made around $600 every single 